Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here and let's resume our 2022 Complete Beginner's Guide to Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup with our Minotaur in the Lair. Here we go. It's a snake. There's money. And an elephant. Yep, and elephants generally come in packs. So this is okay with us. Because we have axes. I don't think I should even need to do anything fancy like go berserk or use Trog's hand because we're out in the open against them and we're unhinged. We're very strong. We have a plus five axe. Not a problem. Here's some yaks. I'll just draw them back up this way. I don't want to fight anything but yaks right here. And good. And we'll just rest up and keep looking around. That is a scroll of enchant armor, and that is great. I'm going to read it, and we will enchant our shield. Enchanting your shield, if you can, I like to do it a lot because it raises your shield level by one. And again, everything with a grain of salt, you can double check this on the wiki. I've looked at these numbers over the years, but they always change, and sometimes I'm not up to date. But it used to be that your shield level which right now went from 18 to 19, um, determines if you block. And like, so if you an, a, an attack comes in that is capable of being blocked, you first roll evasion, and then you roll block, and then you just mitigate um, with your armor class. But if the attack comes in, like I roll some kind of number, 1 to 19 or something like that, and if it's greater than their 2 hit, I block it, or... Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure exactly how that equation plays out, but the higher that shield level, the more chance you have of blocking, and raising it by one is an appreciable amount, so I love to enchant my shield because it just raises your chance to block. Now remember, it doesn't raise the mitigation of the shield. Uh, do I have boots? I have plus two boots. Uh, because shields are all or nothing, but hey it's still good all right now these are dream sheep and dream sheep are really annoying because they put you to sleep so you get put to sleep and then they wake you up with damage they're the most annoying when there's a bunch of them around um and there's another really hard enemy that can come and just take advantage of you like backstab you or something or just hit you while you're sleeping and when you're asleep you lose your shield, you lose um, a, a lot of your defensive capabilities, so it's bad. But guess what we're going to do? I'm going to use Tremor Stones right here. And they're all dead. And our shield skill went up to 17, and our shield level went to 20, and I'm going to run away. Tremor Stones are beautiful, but they are loud. So we've attracted a bunch of enemies to that area, so let's just cool it. Alright, there's a Spriggan, some wolves, and some bears. You might see this occasionally when you visit the lair. And what that is, is a kind of natural vault where there's like trees and stuff and you'll find enemies like bears and wolves. But then you'll also find, you know, occasionally, I mean, spriggans, dragons even. So, yep, definitely frogs. All right, so I'm just gonna stand here in this section and hit them at the choke point. Yep, here's a polar bear. He wants to come fight. And okay. Let's rest up and run. And okay. The layer, by the way, control O, is indeed six levels. So this is the fifth level. So we're going to go down to the bottom level. There's no rune in the layer, like I said before, but sometimes on the sixth level, there's a little bit of a treasure. So that's cool. Here's a hydra. So we got a switch to our flaming war axe but I will also say sometimes not sometimes there's nothing down here just a bunch of hard enemies but either way we're going to clear it out we'll find out what's down here and here's elephants so I'm just going to take the elephants back to the steps now don't fight enemies like elephants or dragons necessarily on the steps if you're trying to make a quick getaway because they can push you off of the staircase with their stampede effect and then you're just like 
sitting there and the dragon or the elephant is standing on the staircase and you desperately need to leave. So I like to fight them close to the steps, but not generally on top of the steps. Okay, here come a bunch of guys. Let's lead them back. Now again, these strategies that I'm doing of just leading enemies back are probably not going to be as viable, just a little bit more dangerous than they are now, given the fact that, uh, at least as I understand it, in what is now the live version of the game, 0.29, there's a 1 in 3 chance that the enemy will get an attack on you when you do that. Ooh, that guy didn't step on the alarm trap, thank you. Just in case you had forgotten, because I do believe I explained the alarm trap in an earlier episode of this guide, that kind of gold trap with the radiating circles, concentric circles, or arcs, I should say, coming out of it, um, is an alarm trap. And if enemies, an enemy steps on that, or if I step on that, it'll trigger and make a big loud noise. And yep, mark us. So this guy blinked over to it. He's a blink frog, so he blinks. And he has marked us. So we have the debuff mark on us right here. It says your location is marked due to the effects of a trap or spell and monsters will hunt you down more precisely and will be able to detect you even if you're not in their vision so what that means is every enemy on the, f the floor knows where we are and is coming at us so in general i like to just run away when i get a mark and just wait for it to wear off now they still will know kind of where we were last but hopefully eventually they'll calm down but you can see there's a nice congregation of enemies by the steps so i'm just going to stair dance these a bit until we can thin this herd out. And we're going to take damage doing that, but we'll get there. And goodness gracious, that sweet Minotaur headbutt. We've leveled up, so we go strength, and we get two strength points, and well, now we're just even more beastly. So how about that? We got a charge back on our Tremor Stones. There's a Tyrant Leech. Tyrant Leeches are very annoying because they get stronger. Um... <laughs> when they drain you and uh, they can surprise you with how much damage they can do. Like if you have a bunch of health missing uh, and they get to drain you, they'll start smacking you and draining you and regenerating and just bad things. So try to take them down as fast as you can. Luckily, they aren't a problem for this character. Now that's an eight headed Hydra. So I definitely have to switch over to my war axe of flaming and just fight this guy right here i'm not doing anything nuts i don't need to okay go up the steps how are we doing on our shields okay so you can see our shield by the way um the manual is gone we've used up the manual of shields and now training shields is prohibitively difficult so i'm going to stop doing it i'm fine with where my shield is at we have a 21 shield level and let's make some choices on what to train I'm going to actually round my character out and just do a bunch. I'm going to go fighting, axes, armor, all right, and just train these up because these are all good. More hit points, more armor class. You see how hard that guy hit me right there, the Tyrant Leech, by the way. And Trog gives us a weapon, which is a plus four longsword of flaming. So it's flaming, good against Hydras, but longsword, not what we're using. Can use it, but not great. So Trog doesn't always hit. In fact, Trog mostly misses, but when it does hit, it's great. Which is why I'm not, like, too obsessed. Uh, oh, I'm still flaming. Oops. There we go. With, uh... Cool. Little treasure vault there. It's why I'm not too obsessed with getting Trog's gifts, and I use Trog's hand without concern. Because you can't really rely on them. They're not the best, but they can be. Um, but I just want to survive. So here we go. Here's a basilisk. Got to watch out for this creep. And let's see. Let's pick up this stuff. Oh. We'll check out that amulet. Oh, okay. There's an electric eel. So let's go ahead and give him the wand of flame. And he's not dead. Oh, no. He is dead now. The And there's another one. Let's just give it, uh, oops, flame. There he is. Remember, just look for that. You feel more experienced. That will help you, yep, know that it's dead because the steam cloud's lingering effect has ripped through it. And I'm just going to walk around and explore. Here's a wolf. Bye. Now, we got a necklace, right, that's artifact and has some good stuff on it. It is 
This. Well, no. This. So it has Guardian Spirit, which has reverse synergy with our infusion. This takes your magic points as hit points, shares the pools between them to give you a little bit of extra hit points. Normally on Trog, this is actually pretty good. Um, it's got resist electricity, which is good, and it has dex, which is, okay, that's fine. Not really, don't care too much. It's a lot of dexterity. Uh, but unfortunately, it's contaminated, and so if you look at it, contamination means if I take it off, it causes magical contamination. So if it's so good that I never plan to take it off, then that's fine. And generally, a low level of contamination isn't bad, but sometimes you can get a big blast of it when you take it off, and contamination can do a bunch of gnarly things including give you mutations which can be hard to deal with um, so I'm not going to actually put it on because quite frankly I like reflection better than what it's giving me and it's not useful to toggle it on and off for resist electricity because it has that contamination brand there's a scarf I generally don't use scarves it's a scarf of resistance that can be actually very good what kind of cloak am I wearing Oh, right, right, right. Resist poison plus one. All right, I'll pick this up. It's kind of, Oh, I can't carry it. All right, let's drop some stuff. Um, I will drop this sling, this morning star, this anti-magic broad axe. Um, I'll drop these plus two gloves. Um, amulet of magic regeneration. Ring of Magical Power, Ring of Magical Power. Uh, this ring right here. This amulet we just got. I'm still intrigued by the Necklace of Bloodlust. Just for solidarity's sake with my deity. One Ring of Protection plus Fire, don't need them both. And we'll drop all that right there. Remember, you can always come back and get it. I just want to get it so I can show you what this does. This is actually pretty sweet because it will give you... Um, fire and cold resistance which we don't have and so there's like a really strong argument for wearing this but uh, our cloak is plus one and resist poison so it's also good we got acid and polymorph uh, polymorph is a good wand because if there's a particular enemy that's like a hard counter to your character or is just otherwise a nightmare and you have decent evocations, you might be able to change it into something else that's easier for you to take care of. And Polymorph will tell you what the possibilities that you will get are and you can make a determination on whether or not it's worth it for you. Um, so for example, if I were to try to Polymorph this Rhyme Drake, I could turn him into an Acid Dragon, a Malai, or a Tengu. And honestly, um, I don't want a Malai or an Acid Dragon. I'm okay with that. So sometimes the options are actually worse. Uh, so you want to pay attention to what the possibilities are. It'll also tell you, by the way, just like other wands, it, the percentage chance that it will work. All right, so now we have indubitably cleared out the sixth level of the lair, except for that Ghost Vault, which, like I said, I never open Ghost Vaults unless... There's just something inescapably powerful behind the doors, and I feel confident that I can take out whatever's in there. We also did find the slime pits right here, which is guaranteed to be in the lair. It's a sub-branch. It has a rune, but in my estimation, it's not a rune. It's not a branch you really ever want to go into unless you have to, or you're going for extended because it's incredibly difficult. There's lots of enemies that corrode you, uh, do all sorts of nasty things to you. The deeper you get, there are some enemies that will mutate you that you just don't want to mess with. The walls themselves do damage to you. So I like to just say thank you, but no thank you. And at this point, now we have to make a decision on where we want to go. So we've cleared out the lair, and we could go back to the dungeon, do the main dungeon down to 15, or we could poke around in the swamp or the snake pit. I think going to the main dungeon and seeing how it is is pretty good right now. So I'm going to shift go dungeon and we're going to go to 12 and then we're going to find a staircase down and just kind of see what's around here. Now remember, once you get to this point, the dungeon will just become a lot more difficult. So just be careful. I'm going to go up this staircase. I like to mark staircases uh, so I know where they are. and. Be sure that they come up someplace safe in case there's an emergency. 
All right, so let's continue, but I will say, uh, I haven't pointed this out yet, but apparently at some point I picked up a box of beasts when I was just auto-exploring, and way at the beginning of the guide, I had, uh, when I was showing you guys how to turn on and off what auto-pickup gathered for you, I had toggled on the evocable items that I wanted to be on auto-pickup, like tremor stones, box of beasts, lightning rod, stuff like that and we got one so the box of beasts is interesting i'll show it here um it goes down here in miscellaneous and so it's a box filled with the bizarre leftovers of a depraved wizard's magical experiment so you open it basically and it opens up um beasts of a different type that can be really really strong and wreck things um but it has one charge and can regain ch the charge, just like the Tremor Stones, as you gain experience. So you don't know what you're going to get, but usually the Box of Beasts um, is going to give you something formidable. It is random. Bat is not ideal, but some of these other ones are just great. So it's a fun thing to do if you want, uh, <laughs> you know, if you're in a pinch and you need some help. All right, so we still have the Flaming Axe, and there's an Eight-Headed Hydra. I'm just going to throw stones at it until it gets to us. And blast it apart, just like that. It's a vampire. Man, we are killing things with throwing. Oh, I also want to mention, I, I had said when we fought the Minotaur that javelins were troubling... These are actually particularly troubling. These are silver javelins. So silver javelins, if you look at them, they do base damage 10, all right? And they do extra damage against mutated beings according to how mutated they are or any kind of transformed beings. So they're very, very powerful. Uh, comparison, like a, a stone has base damage 10 and the javelins have base damage... I'm sorry, the stone has base damage 2 and the javelins have 10. So that shows you how much better they are considering I have nothing in throwing and yet I'm capable of wrecking things with stones me personally I like to save silver javelins for uh, orbs of fire which are ridiculous okay this is a bad spot for us because they have reach weapons uh, we're fighting a reaper uh, who is uh, annoying I'm just going to go berserk right here and rip this dude apart and rip this guy apart and run away Though both of those guys had reach weapons and they, uh, like a scythe and a halberd, and they have, you know, they do good damage with it. So we were kind of getting hurt a bit. So I just ended any kind of question by berserking them. Uh, but it is a plus one scythe of freezing, which of course, you know, is doing frost damage, which we don't resist, so it's extra damage. But anyway, orbs of fire are arguably the hardest enemy in the game, or one of them, and they guard Zot's orb. Uh, on in the realm of Zot, they can be on different levels, and they proliferate mostly around the area with Zot's orb. You're going to have to fight a few of them, or at least see some of them, if you want to win. And they're really, really challenging, and they can do things from range. So you need to close that distance with them. Uh, with the character like this, you also want to have a bunch of fire resist. One pip minimum two is great, but uh, javelins, especially silver javelins, can go a long way into ripping them apart. By the way, uh, that little vault with the Reaper shows us that there is a um, set artifact there called the Finisher, which is a plus five scythe, and it has speed and eviscerate. Okay, let me show you that. So there's some really cool scythes in the game that are fixed artifacts, and this is one of them. Mm. Okay, and um, let me see here. Let me see if I can. Uh, no, here, I'm gonna pick it up so I can at least. Uh, show off the brand. So speed means it attacks faster than normal. All right. So it's significantly faster than it's. Uh, normal base attack delay and goes even faster if you're trained with pole arms, of course. Size are in the pole arm category. And um, it has evisceration, which means it could insta kill something. 
but it has a decreasing chance against stronger foes. So it's really, really a fun weapon to use if you would like. Now, I'm not going to use it with this character, but if you were going pole arms, which can be a good time, you would have fun with, with that fast plus five scythe uh, with eviscerate. Okay, there's a cloak. And here's some wand of burst. And we'll just go ahead and rip this guy apart. As we finish mapping out dungeon 13. Ooh, there's a shop just here. Fantastic. Let's see what they got. Anything good? They have a phantom mirror, which we just picked up and I'll talk about in a moment. They have potions of haste, which is actually tremendous. I'm going to put these on my shopping list. Um, oops, that's not how you do that. You go like this. And I'm going to put the Potion of Curing on there as well. Scroll of Fear might be nice. Anything I want. Okay. I don't need another Phantom Mirror. There are some evocable items in this game, like a Phantom Mirror, for example, where even if you have more than one, they share the same cooldown or charge. So you can't just, like, um, use a bunch of them. At least that's how it used to be. I don't know if they have changed it. But a Phantom Mirror is fantastic because it will duplicate an enemy and just make a copy of that enemy that is friendly to you and fighting them. And let's just look at it really fast. So a hand mirror which can re create a reflection of a nearby creature. Um, the du duration it lasts increases with evocation and decreases with the willpower of the target. Um, it's not as strong as the creature it mirrors, but it's really, really good. And it does say here, this is confirmation of what I was just mentioning. Once activated, this device and all other devices of its kind, so all other phantom mirrors, are rendered temporarily inert. But they recharge as you gain experience, so you, you don't need to carry more than one, which is nice. Um, you used to be able to, there were some of these items that you could, and I think the phantom mirror might have been one of them, where you could carry more than one. And... You know, uh, take you know, kind of exploit that, but they they stop that. The Phantom Mirror though is really powerful. You can uh, duplicate some things you can't duplicate, but there are enemies that you can duplicate. Like even um, the King Slime, like the big slime um, that guards the slime rune, you can just duplicate him, the the Jelly Man, and just make another you know big big jelly slime guy to fight and it, it can go really well for you so it's a powerful item all right uh, I'm gonna change and use my spectral axe and we do have to be mindful of these slime creatures because on their own remember not deadly if there's too many of them deadly all right we're gonna bounce up and we're gonna be getting a hit here I'm gonna go berserk actually because this is painful <laughs> the uh, ugly things don't be fooled ugly things might not look like much but they can hit for a lot and because we don't have good resistances anything that's doing fire or cold oh there's some singing weapons these weapons are you see the musical notes by them in the upper left this means that they have been like magically enchanted to be like dancing swords or uh, animated weapons that will just come fight you oop there's cyclops we want to hide back here and uh what happens is they're pretty strong, but once you kill them, you can actually use them as weapons. Uh, so it's a great way to find weapons sometimes, and there's the vaults. But it's also uh, scary because they can be really, really strong. Now let's go up to the Cyclops, and hopefully we can reflect a shot back at him. We didn't. Uh, at least I don't think, did we? No, we didn't. He hit us, so I was hoping to reflect his boulder and kill him. Oh. That's what happened right there, though. I don't know if you could see that, but it says you reflect the arrow off uh, an invisible shield around you, and it went back and it hit the centaur. So we hit him with his own arrow. This is why reflect is so good. I mean, this guy is already almost dead by the time we get to him from his own weapon. Ooh, it's getting really dicey here. So this is a... Di um, typically... When you have the entrance to the vaults like this, there's a huge crowd of enemies that guard it. The vaults, by the way, is a sub-branch that is in every game. It's not random. Uh, its location is random uh, on the lower levels of the dungeon, but it has a rune inside it. 
I mean, it's typically a, a branch that I take out for a rune. It's actually, most of the time, pretty easy for... Well, the first flo four floors are pretty straightforward for a melee character like us. But the fifth floor is a challenge in and of itself that's diabolical, and you'll see when we get there. There's an Efreet, so I'm not great against fire. I'm just going to duck back here. Bam, 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 bam. Armor skill up to level 12. Tremendous. And let's just get out of this. So there's those, like, miasma clouds right here. Foul pestilence. And the X's, again, mark, like, the possible squares where that pestilence could spawn. And we're just going to not go there. There's a potion of haste for free. Ring of protection from cold. Nice. So now we have rings of protection of both elements if we need to swap them on in a pinch. And we're just crushing dungeon 14. By the way, let's just take a look at our shopping list. So we now have um, 886 gold. So we could go buy enchant weapon and all these potions, or we could splurge on this plate armor. Our plate armor that we're wearing right now is just plus zero. So uh, I'm actually going to go buy the plate. The potions are more practical, but I, if you look, I do have two haste potions. Uh, my, my weapon is enchanted pretty well, and I, if I could get some magical plate armor that had, like, resist fire or resist cold, I really think that that would actually help me more right now than in a potion that I already have a copy of. So I'm going to just push shift four, and I'm going to click on this, and we're going to just go right to it. We're going to go in, and um, we will buy it. Yes. And we will go ahead and wear it. And it's plus two plate armor of willpower. Okay, so this is great. So it's not um, resistance, which I kind of wanted, but look at me. My willpower is two. If I put this on, all right, first of all, my armor class will go up to 28, uh, which is even better for mitigation purposes. But it also gives me now three pips of will resistance, which just makes us way, way stronger against any kind of hex. So that's good. Okay. Uh, let's go poke around up here in this corner. I'm probably going to leave it unexplored, but we'll see. Do I want to go in here? Like, is there anything super cool about this? Yeah. Uh, yes, they're going to ask you if you really want to walk here, and I am going to say yes, just because I kind of want to see, like, what could possibly be up here that's so good. Or <laughs> that's anything, I guess. And we got slowed by the pestilence. There's a little bit of money up here. And a buckler. So we did actually get 13 gold, uh, and that's it. And we'll just walk out of here and just say thanks. Thanks for the memories. No, don't step in the cloud actively. Just wait, and let's get out of here. Okay, good. So we now have mapped it out. I'm just going to wait. Take a look at my skills. Fighting, axes, armor. Fantastic. I like it. Um, do I have any potions that are unidentified? No. Do I have any scrolls that are unidentified? No. Okay. Now, the vaults, like I said, it's a sub-branch that do have a rune. Um, but we cannot go down into the vaults because um, you have to have at least one rune to, to open the vault. Like, if I try to go in there, it'll say you need a rune to enter this place. So we have to get a rune before we go in there. But that's actually pretty good for us because... Uh, it's a little bit stronger than, like, the swamp or the snake pit. So we want to be strong enough to, to take it out anyway. So let's explore. Oh, well, this is embarrassing. Um, oh, never mind. It's not embarrassing. So plus six armor of ponderousness. Ponderousness, I'll pick it up to show you. I'm going to close the door. It's so bizarre. I know there's a way to make this good, but maybe it's just if you worship, worship Che, the god that appreciates slowness. This just makes you slow, but it is plus six. So it's kind of like 
strictly a negative brand, um, but I don't know if it maybe if you worship Che, who likes you moving slower, it's it's revered. I don't know. I'm gonna drop this. I'm gonna drop some stuff. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to get rid of? I'm gonna drop the finisher. You can see I have 50 of 52 slots. So I'm filling up. Uh, I'm gonna drop. Uh, Um, you know what? I have a great idea. I'm gonna... This is fine. I'll just drop that. I'm actually gonna... Because I got this plate mail of will, you know what this is gonna allow me to do? Three pips of will is fantastic, but with my Trog's hand, I go up there anyway. Actually, I think I might go to four. But, but two is good enough, and if... I now can afford to just take off my ring of willpower and switch to his plus six ring of strength so I can wreck things. So I'm going to put on plus six ring of strength instead of my ring of willpower. You'll see I go up to 33 strength. My evasion actually goes up because um, my encumbrance rating is diminished by how strong I am. I can move around easier in this heavy armor. But this will just help us kill stuff faster. If we fight an enemy that is doing frost or cold damage, we can just switch off that plus six ring of strength and go ahead and wreck them with the resistance. That's a boulder beetle that we used to worry about and don't anymore. And here's an invisible wizard. All right, wizards are actually can be rough, so they have a they have a good uh, spell set. So I'm, I'm going to just kind of hide here. I'm going to push S to wait, and if he wants to come fight, he'll open the door, which means... Oh, which means... Yeah, he did that. Well, look at me. This is what I get for taking off my willpower. Okay, so we are being cast into the abyss. This is potentially death for this character. We'll see if we can survive, uh, but this is very often a death sentence for you. We are not killed outright, but we are cast into the abyss, which... I'll show you. Boom. And this is something that wizards can do, right? They have um, a banish to the abyss spell. And the abyss is a nightmare. We're on level two. You can see we're in abyss two. What makes the abyss particularly challenging is it's ever changing. So you can't really map it out. You don't know where the staircases are to get out or the portals are rather. And there's very hard enemies in here. So what we're going to be doing is running as fast as we can and trying to escape. This is an extremely challenging location, probably harder for spellcasters because they can run out of magic. And what makes this place extra hard is you really can't rest very easily in this diabolical chamber. So what I like to do, oh, by the way, it does tell you that there is a, a rune in here if you want to get one of the runes of Zot. But even if I'm going for extended, this is one of the later runes that I try to get because the abyss is hard. I pick one direction, okay, and I run toward it. Now, I'm going to go this way. You see here that there is an altar of Lugonu right there. What I could do is go worship Lugonu, all right? I could switch deities from Trog to Lugonu, and that would allow me... Lugonu is the god of the Abyss, basically, and Lugonu will let you, if you're a member... Um, of his, or of their religion, rather, to just leave the abyss whenever you want. So then we could just escape and be okay. The problem is, Trog will be furious with us if we leave, and we'll start sending in really hard enemies for us to fight, and we lose all of Trog's power, so we won't be able to go berserk anymore or use Trog's hand. It's not the end of the world. I often switch away from Trog if I'm going for more than three runes, but right now, I don't want to do it. I'm just going to walk around going up in this way, looking for a doorway. Now, unfortunately, we found a gateway, but it, this is going deeper into the abyss. These dark purple doors go deeper. What we're trying to find is a door that is very light, almost white, and it goes out. Now, this is another thing that happens in the abyss. Every once in a while, you're going to get just teleported in the abyss and switch to a new location. So, boom, we got moved to a new spot. Okay? 
So this actually looks like very similar to the spot we were in. There's another altar there. It might be the same spot for all. Now, all I know. But anyway, um, I'm going to cut this way. And there's a rock Sasha. So enemies will eventually start to figure out where you are and come for you. Now, you can get swarmed and overwhelmed in the abyss. And one of the things that makes it extra challenging is even if you try to use a teleport scroll, the power of the abyss is like corruption slows down your teleport so it takes forever to teleport so if you're at low health and you're trying to get out fast it does not work so you want to teleport early if you need to like if you see a particularly difficult situation coming for you um run now we're fighting something that's invisible we killed it i'm just going to go this way now i can't there we go um oh here's a draconian storm caller that's fantastically bad uh, we're going to just try to fight this guy here. And there was another guy. So the, both of those guys, the Raiju and the Stormcaller, were doing like electrical damage to us. Uh, which is dreadful because, you know, we don't have resist electricity. I'm going to use Trog's Hand right now to regenerate because I want to keep moving. All right. Oh, by the way, the Tra Draconian probably dropped a cloak. Let me see what he dropped. Yeah, Draconians generally will drop a cloak, but sometimes they have like a magical cloak. So if you ever fight a Draconian... Uh, check out to see if they dropped you a nice cloak. Draconians typically um, live in the realm of Zot. They're like his guardians. So you'll find a ton of them there. But sometimes you'll find them just hanging out here. And I'm just going to keep moving, looking and praying for <laughs> uh, something that's not an ancient Zyme. Okay. So the ancient Zyme just made us get ill, which is not ideal. Okay. I don't like the ancient Zyme, so I am going to read a scroll of teleportation right now. It's going to take forever to work. All right. You see it says you feel the power of the abyss delaying your translocation. Okay, so that's bad. And then there's a thrashing horror. The thrashing horror just wants to do a bunch of damage to us. There's a world binder, so that's also bad. So I'm just going to start walking away. We're sick now. You see all the enemies that are here coming to fight us. We're just going to keep moving. Uh, there's a star-cursed mass, which is just not ideal. I'm running away from everything, but if you ever get here, you might want to just look at everything. This guy can uh, do a bunch of garbage to you, just hurt you. Uh, let's see if we can scroll this down. Right. So when it divides, it screams and like will overcome your mind. So it's a lot of bad stuff. Oh, but we, we got teleported. But we somehow got teleported just... Oh, here we go. Looks like we got teleported twice right there. So we got pulled, and then our teleport happened. Either way, fantastic. Now, we're sick, so if I want to drink a potion of curing... Um, oh, it doesn't get rid of sickness. Let me see this. You have been sickened, and your health will no longer regenerate. Oh, okay, that's bad. But sickness will wear off eventually, so it just prevents our regeneration. Curing does not take care of that, so don't waste a curing potion like I did. Curing takes care of a lot of status ailments, but apparently not that one. All right. So sometimes they change the way that certain <laughs> certain things function. Uh, and there's a white imp. And let's just kind of go this way. There's a deep elf sorcerer who's red. Uh, and that's bad. There is a Hell Hog, which is also bad. So I'm going to read another scroll of teleport. And try to get out of here. Okay, the Wretched Star. Um, this enemy up here is bad. Because what it does, it will, like, give you these temporary mutations that are bad. Uh, luckily, in some ways, I'm going to read a scroll of fog, by the way just to block everybody's line of sight to me. One thing that this does that's nice... Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's nothing that it does. The only nice thing about the Wretched Star is that the, tele the mutations are temporary. 
um, but they're bad and they can stack up. And so they're one of the reasons why you're terrified, or at least I'm terrified. I'm actually going to put on my ring of protection from fire and take away my ring of strength for the moment. And I'm gonna go over here and we're getting mutated and I'm just gonna run this way. And all right, we blocked the attack and we got pulled over here. Now look at the negative mutations. We only actually got this one. And it says right here in the purple brackets, you frequently scream uncontrollably at your foes. That is a regular mutation that you can get. Um, it's like you have Tourette syndrome kind of or whatever. And it's bad because it just makes a lot of noise, but it otherwise isn't too deadly. It's just really unfortunate if you're trying to be stealthy. But um, we, we could have gotten much worse. Okay, now I'm going to cut over here. And there's Lugonu again, the altar, just just laughing at me, saying, you know you want to switch to me, um, but I don't. I want to keep Trog, <laughs> if I can. And we're just going to keep walking and pray that we can find the way out. Sometimes you can find the way out if you actually fight an enemy. It's possible. Um, Alright, there's a nasty guy down here, smoke smoke demon. We're just going to fight it and kill it. And um, fight that and kill it. Some stuff we can just take down. I'm going to use Trog's hand and just regenerate. Here's a Draconian. And he put a bunch of poison on us, which is mean. And we'll fight this and kill this. Okay. Our character, it's like, we're not instantly dead in this place, but over time like attrition will wear us down I'm going to run out of teleport scrolls for emergencies and and things like that unless I can find a gate and the diabolical thing is you could find it in one square or you could just like not find a way out at all also what's diabolical is uh, here's a orange demon and a thrashing horror I'll fight the thrashing horror I'll use Trog's hand and we'll just take down the orange demon like that okay um, when we get out of the abyss, if we get out, the guy who put us here, the wizard, will just be out there waiting for us. And if we aren't ready to kill them fast enough, they can just cast us right back in. And I've had that happen, and it's just really, really, uh, not ideal, I guess, is a way to put that. The white imp is fighting us, but honestly, the white imp is not a concern at all. I'm just looking for a, a way out. Um, all right. Eventually, because we've been walking around, we're going to probably get pulled out of here by just the abyss itself. But I'm now I'm just kind of cutting this direction and looking for, oh, anything that would help me. Okay. We're, our health is okay. We're no longer sick. Our transient mutation is still there. I'll take down this small abomination. Like I said, sometimes I like to fight stuff if I'm okay. Uh, Acid Dragon is a pain because uh, I swear that occasionally um, fighting an enemy will show me the way out. Like, the way out will appear. Um, I'm just resting right here. Huh. That Acid Dragon didn't come around the corner. Oh, God. Okay. Well, now we found some really hard stuff. All right, so we need to teleport. Uh, the tentacle star spawns are not what we want to see. So we're going to go this way, and we're just going to try to run. There's too many hard things. Okay, cool. We did teleport away. Uh, this looks familiar, but then again, that's the abyss for you. It always looks familiar, doesn't it? All right, there's a quasi, sure. And I'm just looking for anything at all. <laughs> I'm just going now to the left. I... Uh, okay. All right, there's a way down. You don't want to go down, by the way. The enemies get harder and more frequent, and as you go down, just don't do it. If you're trying to escape, anyway. If you're trying to go for the rune, you have to go deeper. 
I don't think the rune can spawn on a floor that's shallower than two. Oh, look at this joy. All right. Um, <laughs> well, okay. Uh, I'm going to go berserk and kill the tentacled star spawn and uh, the wretched star and just pray that it opens a door. It didn't, so I'm just going to wait. And there's the bone dragon. Now that's bad. All right, I'm going to use Trog's hand and... Uh, I'm going to quaff a potion of might and just fight this guy right here. And he's going to hit us hard, but we did okay. Oh my god, we did it. See, this is what I'm saying. Sometimes when you fight enemies, I don't know if it's if it's necessarily that. I think it might just be my soul that wants that to happen. But you see right here, it says, The substance of the abyss twists violently and the gateway leading out appears. Right? So once this happens, we can actually bounce out. Now, I'm going to go out. Um, you'll see that my character has four pips of will because um, I am using Trog's hand. So I'm going to go out, and even if the wizard is here, okay, which he is, and you can see him up here, all right, uh, he cannot successfully send us into the abyss right now because of how high our will is. I'm actually going to put on... Um, a ring of willpower instead of my ring of protection from fire. I'm just going to wait for this guy. And now I'll show you. What he did was he um, did banishment on me. But you'll see right here that he has a 0% chance at this point to banish us. Okay. So now he's been significantly diminished. They changed the wizard spell sets a little bit. Wizards didn't used to be able to banish. I swear they didn't. Um, only certain things did. So they have become much more dangerous given that spell. Uh, but they also might have just different spell books. Anyway, we got them. A the thing you can do is bust out your anti-magic weapon. Um, I dropped mine. That could help, but that guy just did it immediately. But all you really need to do is just boost up your will a little bit. Trog's hand. Like, if you see a wizard, I should have remembered that and just Trog's handed to get my willpower up. So I would have been ready for that. I forgot. And I got sent to the abyss, and I almost got killed. Uh, I mean, that was brutal. The Abyss, one of the things it does, too, is it just drains your consumables. Like, I lost three scrolls of teleport, which is painful, but I didn't lose the game, which is key. So I'm going to bounce up to Dungeon 14 and just breathe a sigh of relief and say, well, at least I'm glad that I got to show you guys the Abyss. Like, you got to see it so you could know how... Uh, what what it's like, like what to expect, what kind of a strategy to use to get out if you get there. If you get sent there too early, you're probably dead. And even in, like I could have died there given the wrong circumstances, the wrong mutations, uh, you know, enemies that are really hard swarming me, all kinds of things. Uh, but luckily we were able to survive. And uh, we're, we're pretty strong with this character. So it wasn't, you know, an outright you're dead moment, but... Ooh, that was scary. So at this point, I think this is a good place to end the episode. I need to, like, you know, lower my heart rate. That was very intense. But uh, I hope educational. All right, everybody. I'll check you guys next time in the next episode of this as we progress further, try to finish the main dungeon, and then maybe go get a rune. Take care.